First question is from Culpepper Eric. Are there any benefits to following a squat every day program? So do you guys remember when this became squat, popular? Squat, the squat, 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 squat every squat, day squat. program? We, yes, address, we actually addressed this exact question. On, well, it's been a while now. It's been a long time. Yeah. But do you guys remember when it became a thing on the internet? I do. It was a while ago. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I first saw this. So here's the thing. I've changed my stance on it, by the oh, way. Oh, well, so so here's the thing. Back in the day, we were told in order to build muscle and build You're strength. You're not allowed to do that, Adam. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with you? way. Um, we were told, and it, this information was disseminated through bodybuilding magazines. We were told that training a muscle group every day was a bad idea. You got to train it. You got to beat it up, let it rest, recover so that it can grow. God forbid you work a muscle when it's sore or God forbid you do the same thing, you know, two or three days in a row. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. It's going to cause you, your body to, to eat away at muscle. Well, I remember at this point in my career, I started realizing that frequency was an amazing thing. If I adjusted intensity, if I could train body parts quite frequently and although intense workouts send a louder muscle building signal, low intense workouts also send a muscle building signal. Not as loud, but it still sends one. And if I do it right, I'll get a great central nervous system response, meaning my CNS gets my muscles to fire and to get strong, especially if it's the same movement. And it can actually facilitate recovery. So when I first saw this come out, I remember I was talking to one of the trainers that worked for me. And he's like, oh, this is so stupid. People are going to totally lose muscle. And I said... If they monitor, if they modify the intensity, people are going to see some of the fastest gains they've ever seen in their entire life with squats. And sure enough, lots of people did. Lots of people did see incredible results with this style of program. But you got to monitor the intensity. You can't hammer yourself with squats every single day because that's a recipe for disaster. Well, I, yeah. I do think that there are there's a big percentage of people this is going to be phenomenal for, and then I think there's a, a big percentage of people this is a terrible idea for. If you don't know how to modify your intensity very well, uh, this is a very dangerous idea. Uh, it's it, and and you'll get little to no benefits from it. If you approach every workout and with the idea that you're just going to you know squat and try and get as mm -hmm. strong as you can every single workout, lift as much as you can every single workout, I think it's a it's a terrible idea and a recipe for potentially getting injured. Now. If you understand that the idea is that you're just supposed to be practicing squatting mm -hmm. and that you're not supposed to be loading it like you're towards your max rep at all, um, I think it could be phenomenal. I mean, when was the last time so when was the last time somebody squatted 30 times in a year? Right. I would challenge there's very few people that have squatted 30 times in an entire year. Mm -hmm. You got to be pretty consistent with your training and and lifting and squatting to do that. So mm -hmm. doing 30 squat 30 days of squatting in a row, you're going to see some some gains if you back off the intensity. Well, and yeah, and and to to that point of of uh, not paying attention to your overall mechanics and sort of like squatting in spite of what your body signals are kind of telling you. Like oh, there's yeah. going to be people out there that are just going to see a message like that and program in squats every day. And they're just going to be like, it's just going to work its way out. Like, the, like things are just going to start working their way out. And uh, you know, I have a problem with that. I, I also too like to, you know, to change up the, instead of always being like the back loaded squat, like I've seen people like, so they'll do different variations of the squat. So they'll do like the Bulgarian squat or they'll do like, you know, goblet squats or they'll do like multiple versions of squats and not just keep it always, you know, the same type of a squat. And so I, I prefer, yeah. you know, if you're going to do it to do something like that, where you get a different stimulus. Yeah. The, the first uh, people to really talk about frequency in this way in, in structured studies were the Soviets, right? The Soviets, trained their Olympic athletes who were so dominant in, in Olympic sports. It was incredible. They, they won everything. And they trained uh, th frequently throughout the day, let alone every day, but it was throughout the day. But what they did is exactly what Adam said, is they practiced. You're practicing the lift. You're practicing the lift. And when it comes to strength, because strength is a skill as much as it's your muscles growing and contracting harder, it's also a skill. So if you practice the same skill over and over again, You'll get better and better and better at it. Now, on the flip side of that, let's say when you squat, let's say normally you squat once a week. And every once in a while when you squat, you feel it a little bit in your hip, right? But it's not a big deal. You're okay. But you feel a little bit in your hip. If you squat every day, you're going to hurt your hip. Like that's that little bit you feel. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to amplify it times seven right. in a week. Right. You and have so, to adjust. And you're going to hurt yourself. So you have to have a really good squat. You have to have a really, really good technique. You have to practice it. And you have to really mo modify your intensity. But I will say that frequency is still the biggest secret in uh, in fitness, it especially in muscle building. It really is. 
You can train things very frequently. Your body adapts, and you get tremendous gains from this. And you look, I tell you, you you see this with blue collar workers. You know, people who, you know, uh, haul you know concrete or you know dig ditches or you know they're doing some stuff that if you went to go do, even if you're fit and you work on the gym, you'd be so sore the next day. Your right. forearms, your shoulders. But these guys and girls, they feel nothing from doing it every single day, and they've got incredible capacity, work capacity in those corresponding muscle groups. You also see this with gymnasts. Gymnasts don't lift any weights, typically. They have mm -hmm. incredibly muscular bodies. They're, they're training their bodies every single day. It's not like they're doing, oh, pummel horse once a week. I can't practice more than that because my muscles are sore or whatever. Yeah. No, they do that shit all the time. Right. And they build tremendous bodies. People in prison, this is how they work out and they get tremendous bodies. So it's, this is, this is right. something that you can utilize but if you're not smart about it, you're going to hurt yourself. Well, it's definitely, a, you know, it's a recipe for for gaining strength and getting stronger is, is you know, practicing and, and adding that in consistently uh, so that way your body recognizes, you get better at it as an overall skill, but, but you still have to be conscious of the fact of repetitive stress. Like if we've been doing this for a really long period of time, uh, you know, inevitably your body's going to start forming into these positions. You're not expressing rotation. You're not expressing side to side movement. Mm -hmm. This is all going to add up as pain and, you know, potential injury down the road. Yeah. In fact, uh, I'm even thinking about experimenting with the routine myself where I train my whole body five days a week, but I literally am going to do one exercise per body part anywhere between one to three sets per exercise. And I'm going to obviously listen to my body and train heavier on some days, lighter on some days, just to see what, what's going to happen. Every time I've experienced, I've experimented with frequency in that way, I get the fastest uh, gains in the short period of time. I think you'll crush. The only thing that you'll have is the same challenge that the people that have that do this, which is the ability to back off. Yep. Because you will. There's going to be, I guarantee when you do that, you're going to have a day when you, the music hits right, you're feeling refreshed and good, and you're going to want to, oh, let's stack another plate on there, or oh, let's do a little more, let's do one more set. I think that's when you do, when you increase the frequency this high, where you're doing it every single day, or like what you're talking about five days in a week, the hardest part is the the, your, the, the psychological piece. You're right, because to give you an example of how much I would scale back, it, it would be like, uh, let's say for me, an intense set of squats is 10 reps with 315, so 315 pounds, 10 reps. Well, if I'm going to squat every day, I'm going to be around probably 225 uh, for 10 reps. So mm -hmm. much, much lighter, uh, still doing 10 reps. And then I may have a day in there where I put 315 on and do like four reps, right? So I'm never really going to that high level of intensity. Yeah, you're like undulating it. Oh, oh, right. And I'm missing it. But I'm always keeping the intensity very moderate mm -hmm. and fighting the urge. You're right. Because what will happen is you'll be like, oh, my gosh. Feels so good. Oh my God, I'm getting really strong. I feel like I'm getting strong. You want to push it. Yeah. And then if you do, so you got to take some time off now. You can't train every day doing that.